Hello, folks, and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party, and let's try Nova 111. It's developed by Funktronic Labs. You can pick it up on Steam for Windows, Steam Play, and Mac for $14.99. It supports Steam achievements, has full controller support, trading cards, Steam cloud saves, leaderboards, uh, and a uh, level editor, which is in beta right now. Later on, they plan on adding procedurally generated levels. Uh, also, if you don't want to play this on PC, you can pick it up on PS4, Vita, Xbox One, and the Wii U. Last of all, before we hop in, I will be playing a press copy that was provided to me for free by the company so I can make this video. So let's go ahead and hop in. Uh, you can see I'm 27% in. So, uh, let's see, you have your various worlds, I forget what they call it. I call them worlds. But, um, yeah, basically you do a few sections of a world and then you open, unlock a new world. I am going to start off, you know what, let's go ahead and start off with this one. This is the last level that I've been able to beat. You can see on the left-hand side it's got the, basically, lets you see how you're doing globally. I, I am not doing well, as you can see, like 1400 or something like that. Now this game is an interesting mix of turn-based and real-time. If you look at the bottom right, whenever I move, my turn counter goes up. So, most of the enemies and actions, things like that, all require a turn to use. If, you're, if you've played turn-based games, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, for example, this rock, I want to destroy it. It takes me two turns to destroy it. Uh, and I'm just moving with the uh, cursor keys here. I'm going to break that. Uh, some stuff I should normally unlock in this stage, but I already have them. Um, but the turn-based elements will come in here shortly. However, some attacks are actually real-time, and again, we'll see that in just a second. Now, as far as the ship goes, we have a shield that you can see around us. Uh, that uh, will absorb one hit, and it regenerates after X number of moves. I don't know how many moves it takes to regenerate, but it's like six to seven. Uh, and at the top left, you can see our weapon indicators. One is our, uh, like, firing beam which we can use there to damage enemies or, in that case, destroy a rock. And two, we have a teleporter beam. I can teleport within, uh, like, up, down, left, or right. Of course, we're going to teleport this way because that vine's blocking our path. We also have bombs, which we will show off in a little bit. Uh, Dr. Science up there. The story basically seems to be you are this vessel, robot vessel. I don't know quite what's driving us other than us. And we're rescuing these scientists and don't really know what's happened. You kind of pick up little bits of the story here and there. Otherwise, it sounds like there was an explosion or a crash and we're picking up these survivors. So you'll notice, again, even the projectiles are turn-based. They're not moving until I move. Now, if I want to advance a turn without moving anywhere, I can hit control and that goes forward one turn. Now, as far as our weapons, the teleportation, or I guess I should say our science abilities. Uh, you can look at the bottom left, you can see we have two charges of the science abilities built up. So again, you'll see we'll use one here with the beam. We blew it away. Now we've only got one science left, but if you check it, one, the bottom left, where it says 12, and the little bar over our head, you can see we're slowly charging the science back up. Uh, and we also have two charges of science. You actually start off with only one saved. Uh, but I've actually picked up an upgrade, so now that I have two. Uh, so using the beam uses one science, energy, whatever you want to call it, and then teleporting uses one as well. Uh, we're going to actually just destroy this rock. And here's where we have, we have our first enemy, at least on this stage. You'll notice an enemy is going to attack when they get that kind of exclamations over their head. Excuse me. Now this enemy charges at you. Each enemy, of course, has different different attributes, different attack styles and whatnot. This guy will charge at you from across the screen. So obviously I want to move. And you can see he slammed into the rock and actually did damage to himself. And he's stunned. He's got those little stars over his head. So we're going to attack and go ahead and kill him. Now, sometimes you pick these things up. These are polygels. You need polygels to charge up your last weapon, which is the polybomb. The polybomb is different than every other item in the game. Basically, everything else that I found recharges just via movement or just passing time. If I hit control, that will also uh, recharge things. So poly uh, polygel bombs are different. 
you have to find those little yellow uh, little orbs to find those. Uh, I'm thinking part of the reasoning is the bombs are pretty powerful. So we have a new enemy, and again, notice the enemy does not move until I move. Now this one is different in that we attack him, and he will drop a bomb which will, or uh, he will, yeah, he'll drop a bomb that's going to explode after a few seconds. Now the reason I'm telling you this before I attack is the bomb is in real time. So I'm going to attack and move away quickly. And you can see, well, I guess he blows up. Sorry, he doesn't drop a bomb. He becomes the bomb. As you can see, he had a separate bar, a progress bar, showing that he is not uh, not running by the rules, not running by the turn-based rules. Uh, so you're, you're going to see more of that as we run into more elements. Uh, some enemies, again, don't play by the rules. They don't go turn-based. They go real-time. Uh, and some other elements, too, like stalactites, also will, uh, will work in real-time. But most things are turn-based. And a lot of the fun of this game is having to kind of deal with, find ways to deal with the enemy, enemies and elements that are turn-based versus the ones that are real-time. Uh, so the one below me, he does like a burp attack that hits two squares. You can see he's about to attack. I can't get to him and kill him, so we're just gonna move out of the way and let him belch. Now, if we keep doing this, he recharges every turn, so there's no way for me to get down to him without taking damage. Now, I could just charge him and just eat an attack because I've got a shield, but we wanna do that. So I wanna hit control to make pass a turn. So now he's going to come to me and I could move in front of him, but that will give him a chance to attack the next round. We're not going to do that. I want to pass another turn. So now he used his turn to move so he can attack in the same turn. We're going to attack him. We see he's got two hit points left. So he can actually, if we hit him, he's still going to be able to hit us. So I'm actually going to drop a bomb with space bar. The bombs do not count against you as far as the turn. They also stun enemies. So not only did that not use the turn, I don't think, I could be wrong. I don't think it did. Uh, but it also stunned him to interrupt his attack. So now I can attack him again. The stuns might be real time. I'm not 100% sure, but we're gonna hit control to pass that so I can go up here. We don't wanna move down because if we had to move down, that would have hit us on that turn, so let's just go ahead and move. There's a health, we'll go ahead and grab the health, we don't need it, but we'll go ahead and grab it anyway. So let's look out for this guy, oh, and again, now here's another element, an important element, is you can use the enemy's attacks against them. So the little cannon to the left is shooting these little blue Oreos. So you saw it hit him once. We're gonna move out of the way, and he's actually gonna bounce that one back. We're going to see if we can actually... and eh, we won't be able to do it because if we control, he'll move up. See? Uh, we'll use our beam to hit him once. And move up. And we still have a charge of science left, so we can use our beam to hit him again. Now, there's multiple ways that you can beat this. That's not like the only way you could have done that without taking damage. Uh, I probably could have also found a way to use the little blue circles to take him out. Again, the only problem is his attack knocks them back, so it might be a little bit difficult to do so. Uh, we'd probably have to have stayed back further to the left-hand side uh, so that he wouldn't trigger his uh, breath attack for us to have a chance to do that. So here, we actually don't want to go in here because he will move up at the same time I move over and I won't be able to kill him fast enough without bombs. So let's go ahead and just move up and we're going to pass time we're still going to be careful you know what we're going to move down here move over his attack only goes two squares over so we're going to move down again mm, this could be actually a little tricky to get him without taking any damage well, we'll we can just absorb a hit on the shields as well Because the problem is he takes three damage. Hmm. We'll just use the bomb and interrupt him. There we go. I overthought that. I mean, obviously I could have killed him pretty easily with the shield, but I was trying to take it, kill him without without taking a shield hit, but uh, or without using a bomb. Let's go ahead and teleport through there. You also find these scientists. Now I don't really know what point, uh, other than just being you know nice nice guy. I don't really know what the point of finding the scientists is. So I, it it might have, it does affect your score when you finish with an entire world, you get a score at the end. Now, also one cool thing with projectiles like this is we can hit it with our beam and it will knock it back up. So I am going to use that to get in there. 
gonna squeeze over here. Also, the game has a good amount of secrets. So you can see here, there was an item hidden behind this rock, uh, and there are other areas with even better secrets, such as increased health uh, and a whole lot of poly gels. So we're gonna go up. We're going to teleport up. And we're going to, they're gonna actually shoot that one back. Now it doesn't hurt these cannons. I don't think you can kill those cannons at all. But it did get it out of the way and without having to, to worry about teleporting. So this is the bomb guy. We are gonna move quickly out of his way because again, that attack actually moves, uh, or that actually goes in real time. Up until this point, I feel like the game wasn't really, oh god, those, these are the worst, those little uh, attacher type tentacle enemies. Those guys attack in real time completely. So as soon as you see them, you generally want to take them out. Not only do they attack in real time, they also, when they attach to you, you can't go too far away from them. They will just, like, there's a leash, basically, uh, so you've got to watch out for that as well. So let's go ahead, go over here. I'm actually going to shoot this down. I don't think this is going to work. Oh, it did work. Uh, we don't have enough science to teleport, though, so that's kind of a bummer. Mm. We're going to actually take the hit go this way. That was not ideal way to do this at all. So we want to get this guy over here. So that can happen. And same deal here. Now this guy, you might not have noticed, he had like a shiky, a shiky, a spiky shell. And if you hit him when he's got the spiky shell on, it knocks the shell off, but it, you take damage. In this case, I let the little gun do the damage. Now this, in my opinion, is this game's strong point, is trying to figure out creative ways to kill the enemies, uh, like using their own attacks against them, using fellow monsters' attacks against them, using the environment. Uh, you haven't seen any of the stalactites, but with stalactites, you can, uh, except that we have to go this way. Yeah, it took a hit, but that's fine. The stalactites also go in real time. So obviously stalactites are on the ceiling. You can go under them or hit them and they will drop on the enemy and you can manipulate it such that it hits the enemy instead of you. Uh, and you get free damage. They actually do like two damage, I think. Uh, these are a newer enemy for this stage. We're gonna wait on him actually, cause he will spin. And he'll spin to where you were. Now, while he's spinning, you cannot attack him. That's kind of one of his special things, is that you can't attack him while he spins. The other thing is when you notice when you hit him, he actually got knocked back, which can actually be a bit of a pain in the arse. So we are going to move this way. Because theoretically... Uh, okay, no, I guess he, he just moves two, two squares in the direction he's facing. So we're going to actually move, because again, I could have made it to him and hit him while he was attacking, but again, while that enemy is spinning, they cannot be damaged by regular attacks. You probably can shoot them with the ray, but you can't do the regular uh, attack. Because uh, a lot of enemies, you want to use that to your advantage, that it takes them around to attack, that you can attack while they're about to, uh, you know, basically charging up, if you will. See, that's definitely one of the... Now you can kind of see why that's a bit uh, annoying to deal with. So I, if I move forward, there's no point because he's gonna try to attack next round. In fact, I'll show you. So, oh, there's no point. I move and then he zooms past me. I move down here and then I get my hit. And again, there's, if I move forward, same thing. So you kind of have to plan around these different enemy types. Right now, it's obviously fairly easy because I'm usually fighting one enemy at a time. It's not really combining things. And I actually feel that way about this game for the most part up until this stage. Uh, or I'm sorry, this world. Oh, let's hurry up and get over here. So again, that one, you kind of have to act quickly, but at the same time, they will often put those types of enemies in basically trap areas where other enemies are so that you're, oh no, I'm, I'm going to die. I've got to hurry up and rush this enemy. And then you're in kind of a nasty situation. Now here we didn't take any damage. In fact, the one up top, I think, killed him off. But the one to the right is about to attack us and he's too far away to use the bomb. So let's just move down out of his way. It's really our only viable move. Now the one up top wants to attack us. So we're going to move over here. Now this is going to trigger him. Now sometimes they seem to take damage when they hit walls. Sometimes they don't. I don't quite understand that. But 
we are going to move up here. So now, watch. Boom, he slammed his own, or his own buddy there. We should have actually hit him as well, but I wasn't thinking. So again, this guy's about to attack us, but we, even though it's turn-based, we technically always move before the enemy. So I can go ahead and finish him before he attacks. So they're gonna move out of his way. We're gonna move over and down so that he comes over here. And again. We can finish him off before he actually gets to attack. So you start to see how these mechanics start start working out. And so I'm, I'm going to try to finish this thought process. Oh, and these are oh god, those are water currents or air currents. I don't. I think we're in the air. Sort of feels like we're in the water. I don't know. We have to be in the air. I get. No, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Point is, these things push you out. It only costs one turn to go into them, but you cannot control yourself once you're inside. So we're gonna try to get this guy out here. I don't think he's going to... He's probably gonna... Yep, he's gonna bounce up and down. What happens if I... Oh, here we go. Eh. And you actually can get enemies to... fall into the... I'm pointing at the screen like you can see it. You can trick them into going into those currents. Now, notice there I got two hits on him because we're using that gun to block his block him off, because normally when he hit him, he backs up. So let's go ahead and do that. Let him slam into the wall and hit him twice. Again, with those enemies, you really want to trap them against the wall so that you're not knocking them away from you. And I really like that. I like the enemy variety so far. I like that I have to kind of think about, okay, what's the most efficient way to kill this uh, enemy without him flying all over the place? Let's go over here. Oh, we found a secret. We found a scientist, which was a dog. I don't know why a dog is in space slash underwater. But he is Air Buddy, apparently. I'm sure there's no no copyright. Uh, there was no reference at all. Just he just happens to be called Air Buddy. Let's go up now, because that's really the only place we can go. Move up, and we'll teleport over. That's one where area or one way they like to kind of get you is when you teleport over an area like that. Sometimes they'll have enemies that you can't see pop out, especially the ones that move in real time. But uh, anyway, let me let me kind of try to finish this thought process before I let myself get too distracted. And I'll kind of play this stage as you would normally expect it to be played. And again, you kind of see how I use that enemy's bullet to get a little extra hit there. But um, but yeah, I feel like again up until this world, the game wasn't really using its strengths. Oops, let's go and use a bomb to stun him. It wasn't really using its strengths, and the game was a bit too easy. Uh, and in fact, like, way too easy. So, but, you know, in, um, and I felt that way until I got here. Sorry, I'm not, like, I don't know why I'm stuttering so badly here. But yeah, I, I feel like the game was too easy up until this point, and it wasn't focusing on its strengths, which again is enemies that mix up the real time plus strategy, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, I guess I should say enemies, situations where you need to use the real time versus turn based parts of the game. And there wasn't enough situations where you have to do that, right? Most of the time, you can be inefficient and just run after the enemies like this, and eventually you'll kill them, uh, regardless of the enemy type. I, I feel like there wasn't enough areas that were really starting to challenge you that you needed to do it in these other ways. Now, obviously, there's things like, you know, the leaderboards you may want to consider. It's like, well, you know, if you want to get on the leaderboards, if you want to beat your friends, you have to think more about your turn count because that factors into your score and that's one of the ways that the leaderboard is measured is by um, is by turns and time as well by the way uh, but there's not like a requirement to do so uh, and of course we're sort of kind of early on where again we're like a fourth of the way through the game but i feel like again it was a little bit too easy at this point this enemy is a little different too by the way when it does that, it's not really attacking, it's just going to teleport. And that little ball that it leaves behind, if you mistime it, 
for example, if you try to attack them twice, you'll run right into that ball and it does damage. It's probably one of the, the weakest enemies in the game because technically you can completely ignore it and it will never hurt you. But uh, you can end up hurting yourself accidentally just bumping into the little exploding balls. All right, so let's blow that up. Teleport over here. Oh, we're oh seeing our first stalactites. Again, you can see those move in real time. Nice. Get a health for yourself. Well, thank you, Mr. George, who's definitely not any kind of reference to... Ah, uh... oh, what was his name? Oh, God, from Ren and Stimpy, come on. He's the greatest mud skipper of them all. Muddy. Muddy mud skipper. How, how could I forget such a complicated name? But this area in particular... Oh, see, that's right. I screwed up because I got in my head. I got too much of a hurry, and I tried to attack him while he was spinning. Which is a mistake. We're going to just... Wait for him. Oh, and again... Kind of trying to get into a hurry while I'm explaining this is causing me to take extra damage that I should not be taking under any circumstance. So we're going to wait for this. We're going to shoot it right back at him. And we're going to do this. Oh, almost had one science. Alright, so he is gone. And if you time it right, in fact, let's do it now. Ah, he's too far away. Alright, so now I should hit him. We got two hits there because we hit him with the beam and we knocked his own uh, projectile back at him, which is pretty awesome. Any game where it allows me to hit enemies back into, or uh, knock projectiles back into enemies, automatic points for me. Because I love that element, I don't know why. We're probably going to want to kill those because that's very busy over there. You always want to keep an eye out for the secret areas, uh, like I mentioned before. I think this is just going to take us back where we were. Yes. But yeah, you want to keep an eye out for those secret areas. Again, there's generally... Sometimes it's going to be areas that you can't get to unless you teleport. Other times it will be, like, an area behind a rock. And eventually you kind of learn how that looks. Uh, oh, you know what? So now there's two of those things there. And if I knock them back, boom, you can see he now takes, he took two damage. I've also noticed if you hit control, which just passes a turn and you don't move at all, you actually get more of your science back. It looks like you get four science for every time you hit control. So if you really want, again, if you don't care about score, you can just sit here and hit control and get all your, uh, your points back. Oop. Hmm. I wonder if I can get over there. Probably can, but I would take a shield hit. If I could be there. Let's knock that back. So, yeah, there we go. There we go. Got the health that we will definitely want later on. If you look up at the night sky, know that other people will be looking down on you. That's comforting and creepy. There's the way out, which we cannot go out that way. Let's go ahead and scoot out of here. We're not going to grab that other health because we don't need it. There's also a map. And it's a, it can be a little confusing because the purple just means the plants that you can't bypass without teleporting. The red is either a air, a, a air current, which, you know, obviously when they're longer, that means the air current. And the smaller ones, like just the, the dot pixels are um, that's like just an item so it can be health it can be a scientist it can be a uh, poly gel uh, that's not in a good way so let's go ahead and bomb him ah I could have just let the bomb kill him which again there's really no point to it I wish there was more point to the to the like I don't know what you would want to call it the achieve the um, like the combos and things like that you'll notice on the, the right hand side where if I kill several enemies quickly together or if I um, uh, or if I use an enemy's attack to kill them on the right hand side it'll say like you know friendly kill or multiplier or something like that 
Again, other than score, there doesn't really seem to be a lot of reward for doing that. So I, yeah, I don't quite get the point. Now these guys, again, they might seem really easy, and they are, but I could see a case where you're trying to kill them quickly because, again, you're trying to beat the stage as quickly as possible. Seafood should never go on pizza. I tend to agree with that. But what should go on pizza is corn, and one day people will understand that. All right, where's it going to end me up here? So we're going to wait a turn. We're going to drop down. We're going to move. And, oh, you see, the air current actually knocks it back at him, which exactly as I planned. We're going to move here. And we will move out of the way. Let him get attacked. Nope, I attacked him when he had the shield. So we're going to... Since both are going to attack, I'm just going to move. And again, the burper killed this one below me, and I'm going to finish him off. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and let him, let him bounce back. Or let that bounce back at him. And we'll do this just to kill him. Actually, you know what? We'll ignore him and do pass up a turn, attack, and attack again. I, I could have definitely done that more efficient. Uh, we don't need that health. Nope. Got to kill those quick. Got a secret. Man, we're finding a lot of Mr. George, who's definitely not Muddy Mudskipper. I mean, he looks like, oh god, Muddy Mudskipper to me. Almost uh, too busy talking about pseudo muddy mud skipper over there to uh, not get hit by the stalactite. That is stalactite, right? I'm pretty sure. Stalactite is from the top, stalagmite is on the ground. I don't know. I might have it backwards. Because I thought the way I always remembered that was stalagmite from the ceiling was stalagmite fall on you. Right? That makes sense. Anyway. Alright, so obviously that's not the way we're supposed to go. See, I feel like it is. Oh, you know what? We can go this way. Completely missed that. All right, we're not gonna panic. See, we didn't panic. We let the uh, we let the stalactite do the damage there. So we're going to move up and move over. See, that's this is the type of thing where I really again. Is the game's strong points. Let's move back one. I screwed that up. Because what we wanted to do was pass here. Now use the beam to damage with one shot. But see, again, that's where the game really shines. Where I'm like, okay, I'm in this situation. I've got stalactites that I can use, but those are in real time. I've got the orb shooting guy who I can use. And I've got the burpers who I can use to damage his his brothers there and push them back. So how can I use that? So it's a good, that's a perfect combination of where I use the the turn-based parts and the uh, the, the uh, real time because I got them stuck under the stalactites and I waited until they were about to fall before I moved again so that the you know they would do their damage. That's exactly what I'm talking about and I just feel like up until now this game really oh, Oop. Almost screwed that up. He's going to move, or he's going to attack, so we're going to wait. Let him attack his buddy there. We'll have him do this. Get him stuck in the corner. Oh, and again, I screwed myself up. I got too much of a hurry, and I did a little damage. But I had the shield, so it's no big deal. That rhyme, sort of. Mmm. That's gonna hit us regardless. Oh, we don't have enough for a bomb. Alright. Oops. Kinda wasted one there. Alright, let's wait for him to move over. Go ahead and finish him off. Oop. Let him blow up. Uh, he did damage to him, but did not finish him off. That's fine. I will do the job. If you want it done right, you gotta do it yourself. Oh, hidden guy there. That was, I don't know why I moved like that. Let him come to me and pop, pop. 
And finish him off. And out. All right. So when the zone, is what I've been calling planets, uh, they should be called zones, is complete. And I think each zone has three subparts. Uh, we'll call them subparts. I don't know if that's correct, but that's what we're going to call them. Uh, subsections makes more sense. It flows from the tongue a little bit easier. When you finish those three subsections, you come up with this score screen. It tells you your time, your, I think, overall score on the, I guess that 1511. Oh, no, 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 no. 1511 is how many turns you took. And then 2718 is how long, like, you know, real time you took. The question mark is how many secrets you found. And the little happy man's how many scientists you found. So we see we missed two secrets and I missed... Excuse me, I missed a scientist. But we still got an A score. I don't know what the highest is, given our incredibly high turn in times and how we missed a lot of stuff. I'm going to guess there's probably like S and S plus ratings, maybe. Uh, a is the best that I've done, if that tells you anything. Um, usually I find all the secrets and the scientists, but my turns in time are through the roof because I tend to, well, take my time and, and look at everything. Uh, so you can also see on the left hand side, you've got the leaderboards. You can see the time global. I'm uh, 453. I'm moving up. And on turns, I'm 419, kicking some ass. You can also hit tab and it'll compare this to like how your friends are doing. I don't have any friends that are playing this game currently, so it's just me. Um, but uh, yeah, it is cool that it has that feature. I like any game that has that kind of thing built in for leaderboards, just so that you can kind of get an idea and see what other people are, are doing as far as that goes. Um, and that's pretty much it for Nova 111. Uh, I like that, that there's always secrets in every level. I mean, there's like secret secret areas, which tend to have really good items, like, I, like a, uh, well, the only real item upgrades, like permanent upgrades I've found are like health containers it's basically like a heart container from or a heart container piece from zelda where if you get four of them you get one more bar on your life meter usually you'll find things like the uh little ball parts i forget what they're called the little yellow balls you usually find a whole bunch of those in there uh, otherwise there's nothing like permanent that you get uh, like a damage boost that i have found nothing like that so far but it's just fun to find and there's kind of like the pseudo secret areas that you find that are just like it, things hidden behind rocks like little orbs now the orbs it's actually usually pretty easy to find the orbs hidden behind rocks if you like once you get used to the visual style you can kind of see where there would be things hiding but even if not you can use the map and it will identify where something is and you can you know always go back that's usually what i do i'll go through the map and i'll check it occasionally and i'm like oh back you know back a little bit i missed something and i'll go back and i'll grab it and then i'll finish the stage but that's just because i want to i don't feel i have to to progress uh, but it's cool for that it's there for people who enjoy that kind of thing i really like the mechanics i i think it's a very interesting blend of strategy you know turn-based as well as real time. Again, up until this point, I feel it's been too easy, and I don't feel like it's really used its those strengths uh, to really, really engage me in the game. But I see that the potential is there, and especially that last subsection of the zone, I really started to feel like, ah, yeah, like this, this feels good. It feels good. Like when I did that, where I killed those like three burpers and one of the orb throwing guys and had the stalactites. When I did that without taking any damage at all, I think I don't think I took any damage at all. That felt good, like that felt very rewarding that on the strategy side, I figured out, oh, you know, do this. But then on the execution side, I had to do certain parts of it because again, it was in real time. So I had to, to, to use that aspect and it felt very rewarding that I did that. So if anything, I really hope there's a lot more of that later on in the game uh, and that's probably the biggest negative is that it doesn't use the biggest positive which are again the the real-time and turn-based elements uh, as well as using the environment using the enemies on attacks against them things of that nature so anyway that was nova 111 uh, well, the last thing i'm going to cover here is the options there are very few options in this game and what I really, really hate about the options is you can't get to them 
at least any way that I found, unless you're in the game itself. Um, oh, that also reminds me there's another element of this game that I don't like that I do want to talk about briefly, uh, that I almost forgot about. Uh, you do have options here. You have very basic video options, full screen on, vertical sync on, no resolution, anything like that. Uh, nothing, you know, it runs fairly well on my machine. I don't think that's a problem. Sound options, you can turn music and sound effects on or off, that's it. I don't like that. I really, really dislike when options are not given for volume. It's not really a big problem in this game, so that's good. But sometimes I want the music low. Uh, in fact, most of the times I want the music lower significantly than the sound effects. So I really dislike that it doesn't have that. That's just something for me. Uh, here you can see the controls. I don't think you can change them though. Yeah, you can't change them, so if that's the thing, you, you cannot change them. I think there's a few other languages as well. Oh god, let's change that because I only speak English and even then it's pushing it. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is that they say this game has roguelike elements. I think it's pushing it. Basically, the only roguelike element it has is, as far as I can tell, because I've only died in the game once, is that if you die in a subzone, you go all the way back to the beginning, I believe. Um, that I do not like at all. I don't feel it adds anything whatsoever to the game. I don't like roguelikes, period. And you, but you know, part of the roguelike experience is well, you die, you go back, but each playthrough is different because you know, you get different items, the layouts of the zones are different, so it's a little bit different each time you play it. So, the whole dying and losing everything aspect is, isn't as harsh because you're not repetitively doing the same thing. This game doesn't have that. The, the, light, the zone layout is the same. The enemy placement's the same. The item placement's the same. Everything's the same. So forcing you to go back does not add anything to the game except frustration because now you just have to go through and do the same thing again. Uh, I think it should start you at the same sub zone that you're in. Uh, so if I'm in the third sub zone and I die, I should go back to the the third subzone. It might do that, but I swear it took me back all the way to the beginning of the the entire stage. Uh, I, I Again, I apologize for not being 100% sure, but I, I thought that it did. Other than that, I really don't understand how this game is roguelike, uh, because again, it doesn't have procedurally generated levels, it doesn't have like random placement of items, everything's the same every time you go in. Uh, the only thing that's even remotely roguelike is the fact that you go back when when you die, uh, which is, like I say, a, a strange comparison to make, which again, to me, that's fine, because I hate roguelikes. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, that's that's everything for Nova 111. My overall impressions, again, is that I enjoy it. Uh, for $15, uh, given that we're like 25% through the level, or I'm sorry, 25% through the game, it feels a little bit much, maybe? Uh, again, especially because the mechanics themselves aren't really being utilized yet. Uh, it's but it's not it's not a terrible value. It's just kind of like right on Right on the border if I know if I could really suggest it for $15. It is definitely quite enjoyable though um, When when the game rewards you it does or it, when the game does kind of push you to think fast and to use strategy to defeat a room It does feel very rewarding So I like that aspect and I want to see more of that and again, they are going to implement later on uh, procedurally generated Rooms and areas. I, I don't know if it's gonna be a side thing or what, but they have said that they, they do want to do that and they are they do have a level creator in beta currently. So those are things to consider when you're thinking about purchasing the game. But yeah, overall uh, I I enjoy it. It was definitely a cool use of an interesting mechanic. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and if you'd like to see me cover more games that you might not have heard of, make sure to subscribe. Leave comments in the comment section below. Let me th know what you thought of this video and of the game. Follow me on Twitter, and I will see you next time.